Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, over the past several months, I've done a lot of videos talking about what's new in Photoshop, not only the current version of Photoshop, but the beta version as well. Well, there is something that I've neglected to talk about, specifically the new and improved frame tool. Now, Photoshop has had a frame tool in it for some time, but a few months ago, Adobe really added a lot of enhancements to the frame tool. Well, in today's video, I want to show you how the new frame tool works. Now, I don't think a lot of people use the frame tool, and a lot of people probably will never use the frame tool. But if you want to do something creative, you might want to consider using the frame tool. Or if you want to sell your photos online, the frame tool could come in handy, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now, let's talk about this creative angle. As you can see, I just have this blank white photo here. And let's say I want to use the frame tool to create something in the middle of it. So the frame tool is right here. It's this little like square with a, like an X in it. If you don't see it in your toolbar, go up to the Edit menu and then down to Toolbar. And then over on the right hand side, you can click Restore Defaults and then click Done and it will appear over there. Or if you prefer, it will be over here in Extra Tools and you can just click and drag it to the left and put it where you want it. Once you have it over here and you click on it, or just hit the K key, the K key is the keyboard shortcut for the frame tool, you'll notice that you have a lot of different shapes you could choose from. Now, historically, you always had the rectangle shape and the round or circle shape but they've added to it now a triangle um this polygonal frame and a custom frame these are new now i'm just going to pick on the custom frame because i could show you a little bit more about the frame tool if i do use this custom frame when i do use the custom frame you'll notice that I have some options for shapes. And if I roll this open, you can see that there's a category wild am animals, leaf trees, boats, flowers, and so on. If you don't see all of these here, what you could do is click on these, uh, this little gear in the top right-hand corner and then go down to Append Default Shapes. And when you do, you'll get all the shapes. Now, I'm going to go to Boats right away, and I'm going to pick this uh, multi sail sailboat right here so i have this shape so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to draw like a rectangle out onto the image and i'm going to start over here in the top left hand corner and just draw out this rectangle and when i let go you'll notice that i'll get a kind of an outline of that boat that i chose in my shape category over here now what I could do is I could just load an image from my computer and it will fill in where the boat is, or I could use generate image and I'll use generate image for this. So I'll click on generate image and here I'm going to write a warm sunset and I want a photo. I'm not going to choose a special effect or a reference image style or composition, nothing like that. So I'm just going to click generate. Now what will happen is uh, it's going to use uh, a generative AI uh, function to come up with a warm sunset. And you'll notice then it's just where the boat outline is. Now, like any other or most other generative options, I have three variations. So I could choose a variation. I like that first one, I think, the best. Now, once you've chosen the variation you want, what you could do is you could modify it. Um, you can modify both the frame and the image. Now to modify the frame in the layers panel, just click on the frame itself. When you do, you'll get handles and you can make the frame larger or smaller. And you can see how you could do that just by dragging on the handles. Then if you want to modify the image, click on the image. Once you're clicked on the image, you could just drag the image around and reposition it. Or you could go into free transform mode and make it larger or smaller. To do that, hit Command or Control T on your keyboard. Now you can see some of the handles are off the screen, so I need to make this smaller. So I'm going to hit Command minus on my Mac. It's Control minus on a PC. So what I could do now is grab these handles that were off the screen and kind of pull these down. 
Now you see that I've uh, pulled it. I like it where the sun is here, but I've made it so the uh, sides don't have any image there. So if I grab over here, you'll notice it will just pull it out at the top as well. If I want to stretch this out, go up here and just click on this little like chain link to unlock it. And then I could distort the image by pulling it that way in that way and then move this back that way a little bit and that's that and when you're happy with what you've done come up here and hit this check mark and then to fit this to the screen hit commander control zero and you'll fit it to screen so that is really just the kind of the enhancements of the frame tool they now have instead of just a rectangle a circle you can now choose a triangle or a polygonal shape or a custom shape uh, just click there and you could come in here and then choose your shape from this drop down. Now, I mentioned though that maybe for photographers um, who want to sell their images online, they may want to use the frame tool for a specific reason. That is, often you'd like to give the prospective buyer an idea of what your image might look like when hung on a wall. So you'd have a stock photo such as this. And then what you could do is you could take the frame tool and you could go to the uh, rectangle uh, shape here. And then you could come in here and just go to, and since this has a mat, I'll go to the extreme corner of the mat. I'll just draw out my frame like this. Let go. There's my frame and I could readjust it. I have all the handles there. But instead of using generate image, I'll go to import image. And on my desktop, I have this image of some golden retrievers. It's actually a painting. And you could see that it will fit it perfectly in that frame. Now, just like before, I could click on the frame itself and move it if I wanted to. I'll undo that. Or I could click on the image itself and I could move it if I need to. Or I could go into free transform mode by hitting command or control T and I could resize it, but I like it the way it is. And there's that. Now, just to finish it up, uh, let's say that you have more than one you want to put in. So I have these three frames uh, on this uh, nursery wall. So again, I would use the rectangular marquee or the rectangular shape. And then I would go to this top left one or top left corner of the left hand frame. And I draw out my frame here like that I think and then I'll even go over here before I add an image and I'll draw out my frame here and then I'll do the same thing to this one so I have all three frames drawn out now, I only could add in one image at a time, so I can't just add three images at once. So I'll go to the left, far left, click on that, so that's active. You can tell it's active because it has the handles on it. And we'll go to import image instead of generate image. And we'll just uh, pick this baby hippo and put him there. Then we'll click on the middle one, and we'll go to import image, and we'll pick on the baby zebra and put that there. And then we'll click on this last one and we'll go to import image and we'll click on the baby elephant and put that there. Now, again, for each of these layers, for each of the baby animals, I could uh, click on the frame and adjust the frame, click on the image itself and adjust, move the image around. And if I want to resize the image, hit command or control T to go into free transform mode and resize it. And then if you want to, you know, it always has this kind of blue uh, frame around it when you're on these layers click on the background layer and then you could see what it looks like and you could see I, I kind of like what that looks like and you could give let's say you were selling these on Etsy or something like that uh, you could have this as one of the images so people could get an idea what this might look like in a nursery and that's just a more practical I think application of the frame tool and it really comes in handy it's just something though that I, I don't think I ever used. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just what it is. But hopefully this helps some of you out there. And again, it's always good to have as many Photoshop skills uh, as possible because you never know when you may need it uh, in the future. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.